Hey everyone, it's me. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back on the video and we're reacting to the most toxic fandom on the internet and the thumbnail had Scott Cawthon on it. So I already know that uh, FNAF is probably going to be talked about in this. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, I've kind of been all over the place with my reactions. I'm really trying to figure out what I want to do in terms of reactions. Because don't get me wrong, I like doing the pop culture stuff, but I also like doing the gaming stuff. So, I'm going to be playing around with the content to see uh, which one uh, does better. But I think what I really want to do is I want to do different types of content daily. So, you know, like Mondays, I'll do pop culture. Tuesdays, I'll do gaming. That's what I'm thinking about. Let me know in the comments um, what you guys would want to see or if you guys would be down for that to have different types of content on different days. Let me know. Um, but yeah, I I agree with this. Um, I'm pretty sure the FNAF community is going to be named as the most toxic fandom on the internet. And yeah, the FNAF community has gotten extremely toxic in recent years. It was never this bad back in the day. I felt like the community was way more uh, welcoming and interactive. But now it's just everyone is divided. But I also think that's just a product of the internet. It literally could be FNAF, any other game, any other topic, any other industry. People feel the need to be at odds all the time 24-7. No one is ever cohesive. No one is ever on the same page. Everyone is just fighting each other all day on the internet. It literally doesn't matter what it is. Like, I remember I saw a video the other day of Glorilla, and she was giving, like, a motivational speech, and people were divided about that. They're like, oh, how could you be giving a motivational speech if you're cursing? Like, people find any reason to be divisive. And so, I'm not surprised that, you know, it's, but with FNAF, it's just, it's really, really bad. Like, you literally can't do nothing. You can't say nothing without someone leaving a mean hateful comment and then it doesn't also help that we have drama in the FNAF community every other week with a different you know either a, a game developer or even you know theft king whose video i'm reacting to right now he's had quite a bit of drama in the in the past couple months and it's just it's a lot it's a lot and just with the way that the fandom drove scott out of his own community is just insane you don't see that often and it's just crazy how toxic these fan bases can get but yeah we're gonna hop right into this video and see what theft king has to say scott i have your family's names and i'm not afraid to do something bad with them like give them to a hacker on a hacking forum on the deep web i'd recommend you stop your censorship spree scott you this person was angry at scott for making fnaf 3 and 4 that was, that was it. Just making FNAF 3 and 4. Shortly after I released my video on the pair, one of the team members who had absolutely nothing to do with the controversy received a message from someone threatening to come to their house and beat them up in real life. When Scott wrote the first... See, y'all gotta stop doing that too. And I'd be so glad when this becomes a crime because it literally doesn't make any sense that y'all are on the internet getting so upset with people over the dumbest stuff or things that don't affect you personally and you threaten to come to their house or to dox them or like i i don't i don't understand like i could never bring myself to get that upset over a game over a celebrity whatever the case may be go into their dms and threaten them like, you have to be mentally insane to be doing something like that. Book fans started to look into his co-author, Kira Breed Risley. When they were unable to find any of Kira's social media pages, they decided that she simply didn't exist and that there must be some sort of conspiracy going on. Scott finally cleared things up, explaining that Kira is a professional writer. However, before I published the book, I advised her to make sure that all of her social media accounts were set to private because there would be weirdos and creeps who would stalk her on the internet. I yeah. think it was good advice. Sometimes people say really stupid things, completely unprovoked okay. and with virtually nothing to gain from them. Believe me, I would know. Unfortunately, the insane way the FNAF community responds to controversies is unacceptable, and it needs to stop. I should specify that it's not the entire FNAF community, it's a small vocal minority of people who seem to believe that they're the arbiters of righteousness or something I like mean, that. I mean, that might be true as well. Like, it may not be as bad as it seems it's just you know like he said it's a vocal minority so basically twitter users 
It's no secret that FNAF Twitter can be a really toxic place. Yeah. Most of you are probably already aware of the now infamous donations that led to series creator Scott Cawthon retiring and withdrawing from the series. Yep. I was not happy when I heard about Scott's donations, but surely we can all recognize that the way the community responded was totally out of line. It's like, that's the thing, it's like today, in today's society, is like, it doesn't even matter how you've been as a person and how you've carried yourself up until this point people will throw that all away over one mistake and listen i'm not here to defend scott coffin you know i got my own views about politics and certain politicians but at the end of the day you can't say that scott has ever really carried himself in that way and i even even the way that he addressed it i felt like was very honest you know i remember him saying that you know yes i did like he admitted to it he's like yes i did donate to these politicians and yes these things are on their platforms but the way he explained it was that you know he didn't do his due diligence and saw those things that they were against he more so looked at what they were for and because those things aligned with what he believes in that's what he voted for them like he didn't vote for them or he didn't donate to those politicians because they were anti-lgbtq he donated to them because they were pro like i don't know military or whatever but it, it wasn't because of that but because it got overlooked people automatically assumed that he did see that and he did intentionally fund those politicians but again scott has been very inclusive with his fan base with his games he has donated to LGBTQ programs before. Um, you know, Daco always does, you know, the Trevor Project, and he's always donated to that. Like, he has never shown any signs of being homophobic, transphobic, whatever. But because of, I would like to think, an honest mistake, people were so quick to tear him down, dox him, threaten his family. And it's just like, why does it always have to go to that extreme like no one is ever allowed to explain themselves and like i said whatever their character has been up until that mistake is like it doesn't get factored in at all which i think is unfortunate never okay to harass people or send them and their families death threats ever in the wake of my own video covering the pair controversies naturally juniors developer ramanov and the others directly involved started to receive threats and messages telling them to end their own lives and stuff like that Obviously, the people involved in the pair said some pretty offensive things and are accused of doing some pretty lame stuff. It still doesn't justify that kind of behavior, though. For some reason, this vocal segment of the FNAF community on Twitter seems to believe that this behavior is acceptable, that people somehow deserve to be harassed or even threatened over an opinion they had or even a stupid thing they did. They believe that they're entitled to continually punish someone over and over again for a mistake. Yes, yeah, crazy. FNAF Twitter, that's justice, apparently. If you do anything that upsets the mob, then you're no longer allowed to participate in the series whatsoever. God forbid you do, they'll harass you, mock you, torment you, and tell you to end your life. And they'll feel justified in doing so. If you cross FNAF Twitter, then I'm sorry, but you deserve to die. But they burn, motherfucker, you deserve to die. I wish I could point to a All moment right. where the community... <laughs> Um, but no, like, yeah, people, they will not let it go. And that's the scary thing about the internet. You fuck up one time, you're done. Like, your comment section for, like, the rest of eternity is, like, done. Like, I know people who did stuff damn near a year. Even, like, yeah, like, there's just stuff that's happened to certain celebrities or certain figures. Um, no matter what the industry or the community is. And people will hold on to it for dear life. And it's like you go into the comment section. They literally could post a picture of them and their dog. And people are bringing up old stuff that that person did. And it's like, y'all let it go. Like. <sighs> it became so insane. Now, obviously, certain things shouldn't be let go. You know, obviously, like if you're like a pedophile or, you know, like it's certain. There's certain stuff where it's like, okay, yes, you can, you can. But even still, I don't find the, I don't find the drive to get on the internet and harass somebody. I just block them. I don't support them, and I act as if they don't exist. The whole thing of I need to go in the comment section and I need to go in the DMs and I need to let you know that your life means nothing and X, Y, and Z. I just couldn't. I couldn't see myself ever doing that. 
So that's the part that's like really trippy to me. I'm starting to think that things have always been this way. When FNAF 4 came out and MatPat made the dream theory, a lot of people were disappointed and felt like it was a cop-out. However, some people took things way too far and harassed Scott over it. He received threats of violence from people over dream theory. When FNAF first came out, Scott made himself incredibly available to the community, far more so than most developers And I did. missed that. Someone once posted on the FNAF forums about petitioning Scott for something, and Scott himself replied with, No, no, petitions are for big companies. With me, you can just be like, Hey, Scott. Good thing the FNAF community would never fuck that up or anything. Scott frequently took feedback from fans, he interacted with people, and he was just overall a really cool, engaged indie developer. Everyone knew that Scott was reading Fredit and watching FNAF YouTube, and getting him to comment on your content was like always a big badge of honor. Unfortunately, as the series exploded, some began to take advantage of just how accessible Scott was. People would attack him on the Steam forums, calling him a sellout or lazy. When he deleted these insane, threatening, profanity-laden posts, he'd be accused of censorship. Haters don't make me mad. I get more upset when people troll the forums using hate instead of criticism. Mm -hmm. If you want to criticize the game, that's fine. But if you can't do it without making fun of autism, cancer, or the fanbase in general, then you'll get banned. Be respectful on the forums, that's all I ask. The same thing happened again when FNAF World came out to a mediocre reception. Even after Scott vastly improved the game and re-released it for free, people still complained and called him a sellout. When yeah. the first FNAF merchandise launched, some FNAF fans were very upset with the designs. One infamous post described the merch as disgusting, and it surmised that there was no way Scott had approved these designs. It turned out Scott had seen the merch though, and he had approved it, and he was proud of it. He was really disappointed by the community's incredibly visceral reaction yeah. to what amounted to literal children's toys. Seriously, with the levels of outrage present here, you'd think that Scott killed people or something. This is the kind of behavior that doesn't reassure a creator that close interactions with fans are a good thing. And like, can you blame him? Look at where we are now. For some reason, the FNAF community in particular has always been especially entitled and insane when it comes to controversy. When Baddington first started releasing his FNAF videos, everyone loved him and they quickly became a popular creator, but when he went to release the now infamous joke about Martin Walls passing away, people went crazy. Baddington had taken down Well, I will admit though, that joke was a little too far. Like that's not something that everybody is like it's one of those inside jokes that I feel like shouldn't have made it to online because not everybody was gonna get it. Like it looked like you literally were saying rest in peace to him. Like it looked like he had actually died for real. So I can understand people being upset about that. Tweet, he'd apologize. Martin Walls himself was unsurprisingly silent throughout most of the actual drama, yet people took it upon themselves to relentlessly attack Baddington. It was a mistake, you know? It's one thing to criticize someone and make them aware of something they did that you felt was wrong, but, but you, which you it's should another do. thing entirely to continue to do so after the person has already acknowledged your criticisms and apologized for them. At that point, you're no longer providing meaningful feedback. You're just trying to punish someone, and you have no right to do that. When no. my interview with Aftonbilt's developer came out, people started giving them shit for having offered to speak with me at all. They felt that for some reason he wasn't entitled to share the truth of his experience, and they made that very clear to him, over and over again. People started criticizing him for having broken his NDA with Scott, which again, they had no right to do. Any agreements were between the developer and Scott. Random Twitter users have no right to accuse this developer of having broken a contract that they've never seen. Even worse, I suspect that this criticism was made in the hopes that it would hurt the developer's chances to get work in the future. Violating an NDA doesn't usually result in getting sued, but it does hurt your credibility and it can cause you to miss out on opportunities in the future. I think these Twitter users emphasize that part explicitly to try and punish this dev as much as possible, which is just like, fucked up. Like, who the fuck are you? You're not Scott. You don't own FNAF. You don't gain anything from this other than the vindictive pleasure of seeing someone you don't like suffer. It's like this vocal portion of the FNAF community doesn't know how to express their displeasure with anything the other than by cyberbullying people, harassing them, and threatening them. The pair situation was obviously bad, but nothing ever warrants harassing someone, let alone threatening them or encouraging them to end their own lives. Nothing. There's virtually nothing to gain from treating people like that, and honestly, how would you feel if you encouraged someone to do something that drastic and they actually and they did it? it. Right. You'd probably feel like shit, and rightfully so. There's this group of FNAF fans who feel that they're entitled to do everything in their power to make someone's life miserable should they cross them. 
It almost reminds me of the way Scientologists consider critics and ex-members to be fair game and actively encourages their harassment. I've Once just seen a video about fair that game by this segment of the FNAF community, all bets are off. Any and all harassment is acceptable and in fact encouraged. If someone crosses this imaginary line, they're now pure evil and thus should be harassed off the internet and, ideally, harassed out of existence. It's insane. There are ways to express your displeasure with people, but this isn't it. Mm -mm. If anything, it draws attention away from whatever it is you're trying to hold this person accountable for in the first place. The moment you start threatening or harassing someone, you simply drag yourself down to the lowest level possible, and you lose all credibility. The developers who participated in the pair chat room said a lot of pretty reprehensible things that upset a lot of people, and no one was wrong to criticize them over that. However, even they didn't deserve the harassment and threats that they received. Using it's slurs a fan or game. threatening to leak people's fan games is obviously a really lame thing. Like, that was the thing that really had me blown. Like, the way the internet reacted to fan game developers doing stuff. Now, granted, yes, some of them were in that situation where they were... Well, that was the other thing, too. When those developers were trying to, like, get Scott's private wedding photos and all his private information, I'm like... This... <laughs> All of this is over FNAF. Five Nights at Freddy's, a animatronic horror game. There is no reason, there is no logical reason for the harassment, for the drama. Like, it's FNAF. Y'all are this worked up over FNAF. I don't get it to do and it warrants serious criticism but it doesn't justify harassment it doesn't make it right Why, no matter how offended here? you are by someone and no matter how long their list of misdeeds are i assure you telling that person to end their own lives or continually and relentlessly mocking them that makes you just as bad as them it's right. not worse the fnaf community is not a tribe that votes people off the island once a week if you're unhappy with something someone did or said you should express that the best case scenario, you might open up a dialogue with that person and come to a better understanding. Even if you don't, you can just block each other and agree to go your separate ways. What you can't do is threaten to beat people up or harass people. It's not how society works, and if you do that in real life, there's going to be serious consequences. If Snap Twitter is to be believed, everyone is either a shit person, or they're a shit person who hasn't yet revealed how shitty they are. In reality, people aren't perfect, and things aren't so black and white. People make mistakes, and we've all said and done things that we regret. If someone truly does something that you feel is unforgivable, fine. You can let them know, block them, and move on with your life. Nothing gives you the right to harass people, though. And if you find yourself mocking someone over something that they've already apologized for, you might be the shitty person here. Furthermore, complaining never achieves anything anyway. In Scott's own words, it's really not a big deal. There will always be people who waste away their lives, complaining and whining, but it will continue to accomplish the same thing it always accomplished. Nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, this this was a good video. Um, but yeah, the FNAF community, a lot of these games, even the Sims community, yo, like I thought the FNAF community was bad. The Sims community is ruthless. Like, like I was saying earlier about harassing people under the comments section, literally the Sims, like the main account, they can't post anything positive without people spamming the comment section about how their game doesn't work or how the packs are trash, or just leaving some type of negativity underneath the post. Like, it literally doesn't matter what the post is. Like, I literally, like, because, huh. Because <laughs> there have even been times where The Sims has, like, apologized for something, or if they cleared something up, or they're, you know, posting something in response to the community, bringing something up. Like, this recently happened with the gallery if you don't know, there were some issues with uh, inappropriate language um, being used on the gallery. And people were petitioning for them to add those words to the band, words that you can't not use. And they came back with the update and said, hey, we hear y'all. The gallery is now updated. Now these things won't be tolerated. People were still complaining. People were still complaining, still saying things. And it's just like people can never be happy, bro. They can never be satisfied. And it's like you really... Now, granted, with The Sims, they've had a history of problematic things, releasing buggy games, you know, stuff like that. So people have every right to be frustrated. But I don't know, man. I really don't like 
the internet, bro. It's like you say one thing or do one thing wrong and it's raps. And like I said, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I think that you're just better off just not supporting that person or that company and just, you know, blocking them out. You don't need to leave comments. You don't need to harass them. You don't need to dox them. You don't need to do all of that just because they're doing something or saying something that you that you don't agree with. Like, I, I think that's just actually ridiculous. But yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you guys go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys don't want to drop me videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Happy